From Hollywood comes romance. As a junior at UCLA, I've run into my share of football players, track men, and biology professors. But Spy Harrison and Burdett were something else again. And now, with Sharon Douglas as Faye Brooks and Harry Bartell as Spike Harrison, romance brings you the delightful story of a college undergraduate whose after-classes job proved almost too much for her. Transcribed as Robert Carson told it in his laughable comedy, For Business Reasons. This is a story of Amelia Fish, Faye Brooks, Spike, and Burdett. And it all started in the ready room. The ready room is run by the Students' League, and some of the college girls make their pin money hiring out as babysitters. As a matter of fact, there are several girls sitting around now waiting for calls to come in from tired, withering parents. At a desk sits Miss Amelia Fish with a map of Los Angeles behind her. Miss Fish runs the ready room. Why, of course. You want Betty to come over and sit with Merwin. I'll tell her right away. But thank you, Miss Fish. Not at all. Goodbye. Oh, Betty, this is yours, dear, Mrs. Stewart. Oh, Mrs. Stewart. That 13-month monster of hers Betty, would... please. Sorry, but I can't seem to draw anything that doesn't have to be kept off the chandeliers. Okay, Miss Fish, I'm on my way. Don't worry, dear. It can't last forever. <laughs> Good evening, Miss Fish. Anything for me? Oh, hello, Faye, dear. No, nothing yet. That nice Mrs. Grayson left town, you know. Yes, last time I was there, she told me they would. She just imagined trips all over the country, nice clothes, nice food. Nice man. That's what you need, you know. Which? A nice man. You ought to get married. I'm still in school, Miss Fish. I can't get married yet. It would mess everything up. Just plowing through that book under your arm isn't going to straighten everything out. What is it, for heaven's sake? Spangler's Decline of the West. Oh. I've got to read it. It's part of my course. Oh, excuse me, Faye. Mm. Students League, Sitters Bureau, Amelia Fish speaking. Yes, sir. Oh, yes, sir, of course. Oh, Faye. Yeah. I forgot to tell Miss Fish I won't be working tomorrow. Have... Tell her when she gets oh, off the yes, phone, huh? Oh, I will, Betty. What's Bye. Your name, sir? Oh, and I'm Harrison? going to cut class tomorrow. Tell her I'm initial, sick or something, sir? huh? Going to the beach. Yes, I'll need sir. relaxation after an evening yes, with that Merwin. Okay, Betty. Bye. Very good, Mr. Harrison. Goodbye. Well, now, let me see. You're on the top of the list now, Faye. So this is yours. Uh, what a way to work through college. Um, 1060 Los Altos Road. Well, that's only a couple of miles north of here. You can take the Fairborn bus to Sierra Blanca Road, and then you walk two blocks east. Mr. Spike Harrison. Who? Well, I asked him for his initials, but he said everyone called him Spike. He sounded cultivated, like a Harvard man. Spike Harrison. Oh, I'm sure he's all right. At any rate, all you have to do is shriek very loudly and run down the middle of the road. They have a private alarm system up there. If you say so. How many are there and how old? And there's one and it's three. Gee, that's wonderful. No formula. Maybe he, she, or it will sleep all the time. When do I go? Right away. I'm gone. Oh, Faye, dear, yeah. you, uh, you might give me a ring after the people leave for the evening. Give you a ring? Why? I thought just if... Well, I could have the radio cops look in on you. Look, Miss Fish, I need the money I get from babysitting, but I don't need it so bad now, that I have Faye, to... Now, Faye, dear, there's nothing to worry about. I told you Spike sounded very cultivated. He said he just heard of our service, and he thought it would be a big improvement over their previous practice. What was their previous practice? Well, Spike said they left the boy alone and let him scratch on the door and howl. Yes. Well... What can I do for you? What can I do for you? I'm the sitter from the league. Oh, oh, of course. Come in. It was nice of you to come by. Sit down. Thank you. Have a drink? I don't drink. Is that so? Um, I'll be gone quite a while. You'll want something to read, probably. Do you care for magazines? Or I have you... a book with me. 
Oh, yes. Yeah, a big one, isn't it? What's it called? Spangler's Decline of the West. Who wrote it? A man named Spangler. Hmm. Where's the kid? Ki- oh, you mean Burdett. He- he's outside. I'll bring him in. Just make yourself comfortable. Burdett, come on in. He's coming in. Well, isn't it a little cold? Oh, 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 down, boy. Oh, down, oh, down. Oh, 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 he gets carried away sometimes. Oh, Burdett. Oh, I see what you mean. Yeah, let me get your book for you. Heavy, isn't it? Uh, <laughs> there we are. Well, that's Burdett. I I hope you like each other. Uh, Later on, you might let him out in the backyard and get him a drink of water. He's perfectly harmless. Wait a minute. Is Burdett... Yeah, that's right. I've never heard of such a thing. A strange dog. Hates to be alone. Of course. I only keep a day maid. The neighbors have complained about his howling. Every one of my doors has had to be refinished. You're really a godsend, Miss... um, Miss uh, Brooks. uh, Miss Brooks. If he gets restless or uneasy, throw his ball for him. He also enjoys having his ears scratched. Fine. He'll try to coax you into letting him sit on your lap, but don't do it. He weighs 80 pounds. Good night, Miss Brooks. It's your money. Good night. Burdett. I'll work a deal with you. <coughs> you in your small corner and I in mine. <coughs> Darling, Spike, I don't know how you think of all those clever things to say. Well, this is the house. What do you think? Oh, it's divine. Absolutely divine. Burdett likes it, too. And to think that just you two live here. Don't you ever get a little lonely here? Just you? No, no. Burdett has his friends, and I have Burdett. Don't you ever wish for a woman's touch? The fact of the matter is that while I might, Burdett would disapprove. Maybe if I won Burdett over to me, you might... uh, Good grief, who's that? That's Burdette's sitter. Burdette's what? The sitter I got for Burdette from the league. I guess she fell asleep. I was asleep. Uh, Miss Brooks, this is Miss, um, uh, Miss, um... Miss Kramer. Uh, uh, Miss Brooks, this is Miss Kramer. Hi. Oh, hi. Miss Kramer and I have been drinking champagne, Miss Brooks. That's nice. Burdette and I ate an apple. Oh, didn't you just love that funny little man who waited on his spike? And that wonderful orchestra. Burdette and I listened to the radio. Oh, I hope you weren't too lonely, Miss Brooks. I was trying to teach Burdette tricks until I fell asleep. Burdette isn't too good at tricks. Isn't too good. That dog can barely walk without getting confused. He's as sharp as a rowboat. I think Burdette's just too wonderful. He's a jerk. Well, I must drive Miss Kramer home, Miss Brooks. Can we uh, drop you off at the bus or something? Are you going to take Burdette along? Oh, yes, of course we will. Oh, it would be divine. It's no trouble to walk to the bus. Well, I hope everything has been satisfactory, Mr. Harrison. I'm sure it has. You've done very well. The league will send your bill. Oh, uh, I also drank a bottle of Coke. Uh, drop in any time. There's more where that came from. Night. Good night, Miss Kramer. Good night, Burdett. Oh! Miss Brooks. Oh, oh, Miss Brooks. Good evening, Miss Fish. Well, I'm glad you got here. My, I was so worried about you last night. You should have called me, you know. Oh, I'm sorry. I forgot all about it. It was a little strange. Strange? What do you mean? I sat with the dog. We ate an apple. I was astonished. Well, I almost called the police. I was afraid something had happened. I didn't mean to worry you, but after playing catch with Burdette, I forgot... With whom? The dog, Burdette. I guess I went to sleep. Mr. Harrison was standing talking to some gal when I woke up. Was she his young lady friend? With the amount of clothes she was wearing, she could have been his Lady Godiva. Is that a fact? Oh, for goodness sakes, don't look at me like that. I'm not jealous. Of course not, dear. Certainly not of a man I've met for the first time with some woman I've never seen before. Now, Faye, dear... Look, Miss Fish, you've been playing a homespun Cupid with me so long and so hard, I'm convinced you've got to tie him with some justice of the peace. All I said was, is that a fact? Okay. I um, did do a bit of investigation regarding this Mr. Spike Harrison, though. Fine. Up at the university, they tell me he's one of the most successful architects in the last two decades. I don't have any intention of living the full life playing second fiddle to a drafting board. He's just finishing up the new corn exchange building, and he has plans for a hotel in Beverly Hills, and he's building all sorts of private homes. He's just coining money, naturally. Uh, Naturally. And it just so happens he's not married. Now, look. Oh, excuse me, dear. Students League, Sitters Bureau, I'll be the fish speaking... Oh, good evening, Mr. Harrison. (laughs) Spike? (laughs) Miss Brooks immediately? Oh, of course. 
Of course. Uh, thank you, Spike. <laughs> That was Spike, huh? Yes. Oh, and quite a coincidence. He wants you up there at his place right away to sit with Bridette. That dog is a case of arrested canine development. Pity is akin to love. I read that somewhere. Okay, I'm going. But just remember, Miss Fish, this is a sitter's bureau, nothing more. Uh, this is Spike Harrison at 1060 Los Altos Road. I wondered if Miss Brooks could come up again at... Oh, well, that's fine. Thank you, Miss Fish. This is Spike Harrison at 1060 Los Altos Road. I wondered if... Oh, well, that's fine. Thank you, Miss Fish. This is Spike... Oh, thank you, Miss Fish. I am again. It's getting to be a habit. Good evening, good evening. Uh, come in, won't you? Thanks. Do sit down, Miss Brooks. Where's Burdett? He's outside somewhere. He'll be glad to see you again. Last night he had me down for the count of nine. After all the times you've been coming up here, he looks on you as a very dear and a very old friend. If he'd just look, I wouldn't mind so much. Uh, Miss Brooks, is it all right if I call you Faye? After all, I've known you for five days. We might give it a whirl. Good. I notice you've another of those big books under your arm. I hope Burdett gives you a chance to read. I'm sorry I spoke harshly of Burdette the first time I was here. I guess it was that strip teaser you had with you. She upset me. Oh, she wasn't a strip teaser. That was Miss... Uh, uh, Kramer. Uh, yes, Miss Kramer. I forget her first name, but her father's one of the biggest contractors in town. Mm. I had to be nice to her for business reasons. And that Miss Campbell you were out with the second night I was here? Miss Campbell? Oh, Miss Campbell. Uh, her brother's a wonderful boss carpenter. I see. And who is it to be tonight? It's a Miss uh, Morrisby. Just happens that her father is one Never of... mind, it doesn't matter. This is quite a formal affair I'm going to tonight, so I may be later than usual. I'm very happy for you. Burdette and I will drink a toast to you at midnight. And I will drink to you at the same hour. Look, Spike, will you be offended if I say something? No, not at all. What? I just wonder if... if you... You just wonder if what? Oh, I don't know what I wonder. Never mind. Maybe you aren't feeling well. Maybe I should take you home. You'd never get your foolish old buildings up if you wasted time on me. I'm all right. Burdette and I will have a peachy time. Just the two of us. Well, if you're sure it's all right, I'll push along. It's all right. Good night, Spike. And good contacting. This is six nights in a row that Spike has asked for you. Yeah, I know. He said, and I quote, Age cannot wither nor custom stale the infinite variety of your city. Uh-huh. He'd like to engage you again tonight, but he's worried. You don't seem to like the dog. And yet all the other girls he knows think Bridette is wonderful. Oh, he makes me so mad. He's just an old... an old opportunist. Spike, that is. He only goes with girls who are related to people who can help him in his work. He's a low, fawning, self-seeking... My dear, they also serve who only sit and wait. <laughs> sure, I don't know why I should be so upset. He's nothing to me. Why should I care how he operates? I guess I've been reading so much Decline of the West, I'm beginning to believe it. Then I can tell Spike who'll be available tonight. As far as I'm concerned, you can tell Spike to... Yes, dear? Oh, yes, tell him I'm available. We will return to romance in a moment. But first, when you listen to the Jack Benny Show tomorrow night, you'll be following a tradition millions of radio listeners have observed over the years. But there'll be a new twist, the twist of your radio dial to your local CBS station. Tomorrow night, Sunday, January 2nd, Jack Benny and his Merry Mad crew start broadcasting exclusively on CBS at the same time you've always heard them elsewhere. Mary Livingston, Rochester, Phil Harris, Dennis Day, Don Wilson, and all the rest of Jack Benny's famous Sunday evening quarterbacks will be on hand for this opening broadcast on CBS. So don't lose out. It's CBS Sundays at 7 Eastern Standard Time for The Jack Benny Show.
And now with our stars, Sharon Douglas as Faye and Harry Bartell as Spike, we bring you the second act of For Business Reasons. It's been another of those long evenings for Faye Brooks, while Mr. Harrison has been out with another of his seemingly endless supply of young ladies. But now it's well after midnight, and Faye looks up as the door opens. <laughs> oh, Spike, I don't know how you think of clever things like that. <laughs> oh, good evening, Miss Brooks. Still awake? Trying to sleep with Burdette in the same room is not easy. We've been drinking vodka. Oh, by the way, Miss Brooks, this is Miss, um... Uh, Fairbanks. Yes. How do you do? Spike, darling, I think your house is just adorable. Uh, Miss Brooks is a setter for Burdette. Oh, and I just love Burdette. Oh, you nice, wonderful, wonderful dog, you. Miss Brooks is quite a reader. Reads heavy stuff, stuff she can barely lift. Uh, tonight, for instance... Farbstein's Myths of Economic Progress. Who wrote that? I don't know. Mr. Harrison, if that's all, I'll go now. Well, the buses have stopped running. I'll drive you home. What about Burdette? Oh, Miss, uh, Miss, uh... uh Fairbanks. Miss Fairbanks will look after him, won't you, Miss Fairbanks? I can think of nothing I'd enjoy more. <laughs> This is it. This is where I live. Here? In these? Former barracks? Why did they do these things with a little dash of ingenuity, a little taste? And the, the help of the father of some babe with a plunging neckline. Why are you living here? Because I'm the type a church mouse would lend money to. Not because I like former barracks. You live alone? No. I share with an ex-GI and an ex-wave and a six-month's baby. The wave and the GI are going to school. The baby is theirs and isn't going to school. I'm going to school, and I'm a junior. I sleep on the couch. What's your age, height, and weight? Eighteen, five feet two, one hundred ten pounds. No political affiliations. Ah, youth, youth. Why, you can't even vote. You... Miss Brooks, come here. Oh. Oh, you don't know what a trial Burdette was till you came along. I hope you didn't mind my kissing you like that was a little unexpected. I just couldn't help it. It sort of came over me, especially since I knew you were upset about something. You, you were kind of pouting. Spike. Are you, are you too offended to have a date with me tomorrow night? You mean for sitting? No, a regular date. Well? And, and could you wear something besides those saddle shoes and that baggy sweater? I guess so. But I won't have that new bear look that all your other dates have had. Well, that's all right. How about it? Gee, I hardly know what to say other than... Okay. I'll come by for you at 7, then. No, I'll meet you at your place. Where I live, it's too crowded to receive anybody. Well, that's wonderful service, but remember, you won't be on salary tomorrow night. Wonderful. No inhibitions. Oh, and one more thing. Now you should tell me what you've been so upset about. Oh, it's all over now. You still want to see me. Everything's just fine. <laughs> lemon to that coke, young man. For ten cents, I expect more than ice water. Hello, Miss Fish. Oh, hello. Sit down and join me, Faye. I'm having my paws that refreshes. <laughs> what are you up to? Big night tonight. A date with Spy. <gasps> I'm astonished. Well, I'll be darned. You like him, hmm? Uh, all I can say at this time is that when I'm around him, I feel like I'm going to blow my top. <laughs> well, that's an interesting modern idiom. Last night, he kissed me. Mm -hmm. That's interesting, too. Do you think I ought to wear that green dress I've been saving for the annual homecoming dance? Certainly. Shoot the works. This is a year of decision. It's pretty daring. My dear child, with some girls that dress might be daring. With you, it may be self-destruction. Wear it anyway. Oh, good evening, Miss Brooks. You're right. Uh, I can hear the radio from here, but aren't you going to ask me in? You've always done it before. Well, well, yes. Yes, of course. What's the matter? Well, it's just that your dress is... that, that you look so... Well, you, you didn't really have to be quite so formal. This was going to be a quiet evening at home. Don't you like my dress? I 
love it, but it hardly fits in with flannels and burdette chewed sneakers. <laughs> If you're happy, I don't care. I was late getting home. I'm just fixing something in the kitchen. You hungry? Well, as a matter of fact, I am. I, I've been saving up since last night because I thought we were going out somewhere. Well, would you mind eating here? Of course not. After all, anyone can go to the flamingo room. Well, come on in the kitchen. You can watch. Uh, these high heels don't hurt my feet yet. Can't we go out somewhere while it lasts? Who would take care of Burdette? Uh, I'll watch you out in the kitchen. You know, you're an odd girl. What do you mean? Well, you don't think my house is darling, and you, you don't think Burdette is the most wonderful dog in the world. I'm not crazy about either of them. Uh, I've always said, love me, love my dog. Hand me the salt one. Thanks. What are you majoring in at school? Economics. Not home economics. You can't cook, can you? Not much better than you can. Here's a rag to wipe that egg off with. Oh, thanks. Well, you know, this whole thing is structurally wrong between us. It's it's a sort of a triangle, if you include Burdette. How'd you happen to be a sitter? To quote a joke from an earlier generation, because I'm working my way through school. That's my generation you're talking about. That's what I mean. You're not so much older than I am. When I'm in a wheelchair at some sanitarium, you'll only be starting to worry about your figure. No, it would never work. You certainly answer your problems as fast as they come along, don't you? No point being foolish about it. You're still a child. Still a child, huh? Put down that egg beater a minute. Well, perhaps... <clears throat> perhaps not a child, Miss Brooks, but... Let's take this food in the other room. The kitchen's awful hot. Spike, there's something about sitting in front of a fire. Yeah. Do you still think Burdette would mind too much if there were three of us? You and Burdette and me, I mean. We could talk him into it. I've been so unfair to you, Spike, thinking all those things about you and, and those... Those other girls? Well, I admit, it looks pretty calculating. I told her you were a cold-blooded opportunist, you know. Miss Fish? Yeah. Yeah. She told me I was wrong. She's a good gal. We've had several long talks. Uh, look, Faye, I know you don't want to get married now, right away. But will you file it for future reference? I will, Spike. Oh, yes, I will marry you, darling. Anytime you say. And last night he finally asked me to marry him, Miss Fish. He finally asked you? Yes. You mean after knowing him for almost seven days, the old slowpoke got around to it at last? Isn't it wonderful? Oh, yes, dear, I think it is. Of course, I had an idea it was coming sooner or later. You did? Of course. I was house mother at a sorority once. I know all the symptoms. As a matter of fact, I should really take a little credit for the whole romance. What do you mean? Once I knew a little of his stratagem with the young ladies, Campbell, Kramer, Morrowsby, and others, I decided to take a hand myself. What are you talking about? Well, it so happens there's a rich lumbering family in the state of Washington by the name of Brooks. They own thousands of acres of virgin timber. You're not going to say that you... So I called Burdette, uh, Spike, and told him that you were the daughter of old man Brooks the Lumber King. Oh. Told him it was a family tradition that all the young ones had to make their own way. But by the time you're 21... You'd have enough six by eight in your own name to cover the state of Texas. Oh, no. <laughs> Quite a little idea for speeding things up, hmm? After all, all's fair in love and war, you know. Oh, Miss Fish, you couldn't. <laughs> A Students League Sitters Bureau... Oh, no, Mr. Harrison, I haven't seen Miss Brooks. She hasn't been in at all. Yes, sir. Yes, sir, I'll give her the message. Sit. I haven't heard anything at all from her myself, Mr. Harrison. Yes, sir, I will. Students leave. Oh, hello, Mr. Harrison. I know it's been three days. No, I haven't. But if you'll take the advice of a meddling woman who caused it all, just wait. She'll come back. Hello? 
Good evening, Miss Brooks. Isn't it funny how I can always remember your name? Come in and have an apple. Thanks. I thought you'd be in an evening jacket. Aren't you whining and dining anymore? Been too low in my mind. You know it's been four days since I've heard from you? I know. I disappeared. I know. What have you been doing? Sitting home with Burdette. We eat egg burgers. Where's Kramer, Campbell, and Morrisby? Who knows? Out with other architects. I'll take Burdette out for a walk if you want. No, thanks. No charge? No, thanks. I'm thinking of burning this place to the ground. Oh, no, it's a darling house. Also, I'm thinking of having Spike put to sleep. Oh, oh no, you couldn't do that. I adore him. Anyway, you mean Burdette. No, I mean Spike. <laughs> oh, darling. Oh, Spike. I'm too old for this. We might as well recognize him. You're not too old yet. I'm young and strong. I'll take care of you. I'll be your old age benefit. I ask this question for the second time and against my better judgment. Will you marry me? Of course I will. Everything's settled. Oh, no, it isn't. Everything's still spoiled. Miss Fish lied to you. I'm not the right Miss Brooks. I have absolutely no virgin forest. Oh, I knew that right along. Last winter in Palm Springs, I had some dates with the right Miss Brooks. She was homely. You're beautiful. You're not the same girl. We're not? Uh Uh-huh. Oh, Burdett, aren't we lucky? Romance, produced and directed by Norman MacDonald, has brought you Robert Carson's delightful comedy for business reasons, starring Sharon Douglas and Harry Bartell. Featured in the cast were Lois Corbett, Lorette Philbrandt, Estelle Dodge, and Constance Cavendish. David Light was Burdett. The transcribed adaptation of today's story was by Norman MacDonald, and the special music by Eddie Dunstetter. Next week, Mr. Victor Jory is our star, and our story is the dashing, rollicking tale of Jean Lafitte in The Pirate of Orléans. Remember, next week, Victor Jory in The Pirate of Orléans. Not one, but two opening kickoffs are yours this afternoon on CBS when this network brings you the two classic New Year's Day bowl games, one immediately following the other. This unprecedented five-and-a-half-hour broadcast will bring you the Rose Bowl game from Pasadena with Northwestern's Wildcats lined up against California's Golden Bears. Mel Allen will be on hand to bring you this great game immediately after Red Barber reports on Miami's Orange Bowl meeting between Georgia's Bulldogs and the University of Texas Longhorns. So start listening at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for the first of these great New Year's Day games, the Orange Bowl game, to be followed immediately by the Rose Bowl game over most of these same CBS network stations. Now, stay tuned for five minutes of the latest news to be followed by the Let's Pretend program over most of these same CBS network stations. This is Roy Rowan speaking for CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs>